the Earth, home to 7.6 billion people, connected people. There is an average of 3.4 connected devices per person on Earth. By 2020, it is estimated that the number will be 6.5, leading to over 50 billion devices accessing the Internet. It is estimated that there will be a 10 times increase in data creation by 2025. But where does all that data eventually go? The answer is simple, to data centers. Data centers play a vital part to our evolution as a population on this planet. But at what impact? Data center technology is helping facilitate research studying the ever-changing environmental conditions on the Earth but it is also having an impact on the environment at the same time. Companies care about TCO savings, but have they thought about TCE, the total cost to the environment? Everyone knows TCO, total cost of ownership. TCE is more than that. Handle by uh, improve TCO, by improve power consumption, by improve uh, resource sharing. We able to support the customer to reach TCE up to 90%. That means that resource from Mother Earth, 10%, but customer can enjoy 100% of the computing power. Today, 2% of the current total greenhouse gas emissions can be attributed to data centers. That's the same carbon footprint as the airline industry. Experts predict that greenhouse gas emissions will grow between 9% and 13% from 2020 to 2030 based on current trends. Green computing is actually really important for us for a variety of reasons. One, we don't want to be creating the problem of, of greenhouse gas pollution at the same time that we're studying it, but it also actually helps us make uh, parallel computing more efficient. It helps us really push the boundaries of science and technology uh, even further than we can so we can have higher resolution models, we can integrate more data into those models and really understand the Earth in, in more complete ways than we can today. Data center electronic waste, or e-waste, is another concern. There is a turnover cycle of outdated electronic systems every three to five years, which go into our landfills. Between 20 and 50 million metric tons of e-waste is disposed of globally each year. If measures are not taken, e-waste is expected to grow 17% by 2021. Data center power consumption is also a great concern, especially as more and more are built. They currently account for 3% of the global electricity supply. This power consumption is equal to that of some major economies like the United Kingdom. Power consumption by data centers is expected to grow another 4% by 2020. The impact on our environment will continue to be great unless tech companies step up with innovative data center technologies to reduce the impact of these facilities. This innovation has begun. Supermicro is a global leader in end-to-end -end green computing solutions for the data center. To minimize data center's impact on the environment, Supermicro has introduced resource saving architecture. Resource saving architecture is a new design to save the resource to minimize the subsystem, to minimize the material, the pollution, IT waste. When customers refresh their computing power or storage equipment, they don't have to replace the whole system. Instead, they replace some or the subsystem. Green is not just running the data centers at the most efficient PUE levels, which saves the power as well as the natural resource water. Green IT means also that the e-waste you're reducing significantly by adopting these disaggregated servers. How do we go about refreshing your servers in such a way that you put the money where the technology brings value? And that's in the disaggregated server where the CPUs and DRAMs are getting better every year Whereas the slower moving technologies, when it comes to the hard drives, when it comes to the fans, and there is no value in changing the sheet metal, the intent for the data center people should be to operate in the most effective way. 
Intel Corporation believes that global climate change is a serious environmental, economic, and social challenge. Addressing climate change requires leadership, both by individual governments and companies. Intel demonstrates leadership by running energy-efficient data centers. Most of the data center operators are still running the data centers at uh, 68 degree Fahrenheit at the inlet temperature. And this is one of the reasons why the data centers are running at a PUE of 1.7, which is 70% overhead. There is no reason to run these data centers at that level of cooling because these servers can operate at 95 degree Fahrenheit to all the way to 108 degree Fahrenheit, some of the newer servers. There is absolutely no need to cool that. So by increasing the operating temperature all the way up to 95 degree Fahrenheit, one can actually save significant amount of operating budget on the power bills. These compute resources take a lot of power, a lot of energy. So we try to be as green and as efficient as possible. So we look at low power as much as possible. We look at low, you know, decreasing our power and our footprint. The arrival of resource-saving technology marks the beginning of a shift in large-scale data centers that provides total cost of ownership savings for these facilities, while also limiting the total cost to the environment. Businesses are now able to develop more environmentally friendly infrastructure for their data centers by improving their efficiency and reducing overall power consumption. New data centers can be designed with a keen eye on the environment. Resource-saving technology will help to save our planet's resources, reduce waste, and lower the impact on our climate. And this means that as citizens of the Earth, we are making valuable steps to protect this great planet for future generations to come. Every day I'm thinking for how to design something better for a customer, the industry, and even our mother earth.